May Allah connect us with him. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayyu al-Qayyum wa atubu ilah. Tawbaka abdun dhalim bi nafsi la yamlaku li nafsi ya dhurra wa la nafsa. Wa la mawta wa la hayata wa la nashura. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayyu al-Qayyum wa atubu ilah. استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه توبة عبد ظالم لنفسه لا يملك لنفسه ضرا ولا نفعا ولا موتا ولا حياة ولا نشورا استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه توبة عبد ظالم لنفسه لا يملك لنفسه ضرا ولا نفعا ولا موتا ولا حياة ولا نشورا استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه توبة عبد ظالم لنفسه لا يملك لنفسه ضرا ولا نفعا ولا موتا ولا حياة ولا نشورا اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما سلمت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم وتحنن على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحننت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم وترحم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما ترحمت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الحبيب المحبوب الأمين صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت يا رب العالمين صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله واغفر لنا ذنوبنا We make the same dua that Sayyidina Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم made in the authentic narration اللهم إني أسألك حبك يا الله we ask you in this majlis of ours and in this session of ours to grant us your love and beyond and to grant us the, the love of loving those who love you and to grant us the love of things that are beloved to you. Ameen.
We mentioned from the beginning, loving is living, and living is loving, and worshiping is loving, and loving is worshiping. All these things are there. With this, we'll go to number 22 or 23. Where were we? 22. 22, قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى وغفر له A true believer is busy observing Allah's grace and showing gratitude rather than seeking self-recognition. Now, human beings, we are human beings. And human beings, in their nature, is to be distinguished. They want to be distinguished. They want to be different. They want to be uh, unique. They aspire for distinguishment. I, I can do this better than you, you can do this better, etc. all these things. And this drives society, in a sense. The path of distinguishment is taken by those who work hard in good and those who work hard in evil, both. And they're both looking for to be distinguished. The criminal who robs and steals is looking to be distinguished through what he's doing. And the one who works hard, the worker who works hard, and the student who's studying hard is also looking to be distinguished. Lacking, there is difference between choosing the path of good versus choosing choosing the path of wrong. The path of wrong, the path of wrong will always end wrong. And the Quran Kareem encourages us to be distinguished. If you want to be distinguished, please. Meaning, the Quran Kareem does not want people not to be ambitious, but want to encourage you to be ambitious. Don't let the sky be the limit. Let the sky turn into the sky being the beginning, not the limit. Why should it be the limit? Why shouldn't you be ambitious? I'm not talking about the Prophet ﷺ here in that sense, but look at the Sahaba عنهم, with him. When an Nabi ﷺ, I told you yesterday the hadith, where he was sitting in Mecca and there was only few Sahaba at that time who, became, who embraced Islam few handful and they're being tortured and they're being uh, punished and they're being killed some of them and he tells them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there will be a time when you'll be walking all the way from here to sana in yemen all the way to the end the ulama of the sira mentioned also something that's not as authentic like it's known in the books of sira when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went in the Hijrah, and in the Hijrah, according to the ulama of the Sira, all that does not have yani, a strong foundation in the Hadith. Like it, it's there, it's corroborated Sira-wise. He asked Sayyidina Ali to remain in his, in his bed before he left. He went with Sayyidina Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, and allegedly, or what the Sira says, Quraysh sent trace people who can trace sand tracers. They can trace the sand. Huh? Yani in the desert, you can trace the people where, how fresh is the walk, where all that stuff can be traced. There are people who are experts in that. So they tracked to where he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And allegedly, one of them, Suraqa or so, caught up with him Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And again, according to the ulama of Sira and, and uh, history, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him a, a deal. He says, how about you let leave us, leave us, let, let us go. And I will give you something from the jewelry or from the things from the jewels of the palace of Kisra and Qaisar. Kisra at that time was the king in Persia and Qaisar was the king of Rome, Kaiser. 
you're running away barely in the desert, you have nothing. And you're trying to tell me I, I will give you from the palaces of this king and that king, you don't have anything. But allegedly they say, again, I, you know, the uh, riwayah is not authentic according to me. Like in general, yani, to give us this. He told him, allegedly, Suraka told him, would you put it in writing? He says, yeah, I put it in writing. He put it in writing. And he left, Suraka left. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu continued going. And this man lived until the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When these things truly came to Umar and he came, presented the paper, he says, look, I have a paper signed. I, I need you to give me some of the things that you, that you received, uh, the, the booties that you received from this and this. Islam does not tell you, the point here, Islam does not tell you to be ambitious and work towards that goal of yours. But Islam tells you be distinguished in good things. If you want recognition, recognition in whose eyes? If you try to please the creation to recognize you, you're going to end up with two problems. Number one, competition and envy. You're going to end up in that. Competition. If you don't end up in that, you're going to end up in the law of averages. There's six billion, seven billion people on earth today. How many of them are going to be pleased with you? How many? Hundred, three hundred, million, billion. Pleasing the people and seeking their recognition is an endless endeavor. You can never please everybody and seek their recognition. And amongst the things that Sayyidina Abu Hassan al-Shadili radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, he used to say, min ni'amillahi ta'ala alayhi from the ni'mah, from the graces of Allah Ta'ala on me that I am not giving credit for, my, for, what, for the good that I put in this ummah. The good that he does, people don't give him credit for it. They take it from him, they adopt it, they implement it, they attribute it to themselves. He doesn't get the credit for it. He says, this is from the ni'mah of Allah Ta'ala on me. How so? He says, this is how Allah Ta'ala extends my servitude before him because if i get the recognition i it might come to me then that i am doing i am doing i am doing but now since i am in allah service in his servitude i am serving him he is the one who recognized my my service not the creation if the creation recognized my service it's a different thing once allah recognizes my service he takes away the recognition of the creation so that he teaches you you are serving me you're working for me you're not working for their recognition if you work for their recognition that's what you got isn't it or not three people come in a day of judgment Alim, who someone who gave a lot of money, wealthy man who gave lots of money in Zakaw Shaheed. You all know hadith. They come to the accountability. Allah Ta'ala asks the Alim, gave you ilm, gave you lots of knowledge. What did you do with it? He says, Ya Allah, I spent all my life spreading that ilm of yours about you for you Allah Ta'ala tells him Kadabt, you lie you, you spent all your life spreading ilm about me but so there is a saying by them a recognition by them that you are a alim and it was recognized. That is your reward. And he's taking to Jahannam. A man comes, very wealthy man, gave, gave generously, building masajid, building institutions, doing this, doing that, gave generously. 
He comes and Allah asks him, I gave you a lot of wealth, the meaning of the hadith. What have you done with it? He says, Ya Allah, I gave so much building here, doing institutions, doing charities, doing masajid, doing this. I gave a lot. All that you gave me, I gave for you. Allah tells him, Kadabt, you lie. You gave. But so you're recognized as a generous man. And you were. That is your reward. Take him to Jahannam. He gave, he gave, and he built masajid, institutions, or charities. He gave literally. Not that he claimed he gave, he actually gave. That's not someone who claimed he gave. Like in his objection was also recognition, shirk. Allah Ta'ala tells us the hadith of Sahih I am not in need of shirk inna Allah tayyib la yaqbalu illa tayyiba oh that's what it is ala lillahi dinul khalis Allah accepts only that which is pure Shaheed comes. What else do you want? I mean, okay, you say somebody gave all his money, somebody gave his ill. Shaheed comes. I gave you life, I gave you opportunity. What did you do? He tells him, Ya Allah, which means, Ya Allah, I gave my life, I sacrificed my life for you. Allah tells him, Kadabt, you lie. You gave your life, so they say he's brave and willing. And they did. That's your reward. Take him to Jahannam. The problem with seeking recognition, and I understand today's, uh, today's uh, how do I say, the 21st Gregorian century's frame. Uh, you know, I get some people who are close to me also, they tell me, Sheikh, but you, do, you have to recognize the people. You can't not recognize. I feel if I recognize those who work hard, I criticize those who are closest to me most, and I give them the least. They say, Sheikh, but you have to give them more because they're working. I feel if I do, I'll take away, I'll chip away from their reward. But maybe my philosophy is different. I remember the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam in that. Fi Hunayn, you all know the Battle of Hunayn. After the liberation of Mecca, and Nabi Al-Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved to the liberation of Mecca, it was cramped. And there was no violence in it, as you know. Yani, uh, one of the things to show you that Islam is a religion of love and non-violence. Fundamentally so. Principally so. The liberation of Mecca. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now came back to Mecca with 10,000 people and more. And to the people who for 23 years almost been killing his companions, confiscated their properties, tortured people, did everything that you can think of. From killing and murdering Sayyidina Yasir, the father of Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir, and Sumayya radiallahu anha, the mother of Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir, up until recently. And now he's coming with power, over, overwhelming power to Mecca, returning to Mecca with overwhelming power, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he comes and he's surrounding Mecca, the Muslims coming. They're tough criminals who were held out in Mecca. They've tortured people, they've killed people, they've taken the money of people, they've done every single thing that you can think of. He tells them, what do you think I'm going to do? He gathers the people of Mecca. No, the armies are surrounding them. There's no point fighting because you're going to die if you fight. There's no safety anymore for those who held out in Mecca for the, uh, the, till the last hour. No more. You're surrounded. You're done. He calls upon the leaders of them. What do you think I'm going to do? They say this. قَالُوا أَخٌ كَرِيمٌ وَابْنُ أَخٍ كَرِيمٌ 
You are a noble brother, and your father was a noble brother. Noble, look at that. Kareem here means noble. You're a man who, have, who has nobility in him. And noble people, are, they act differently because their nobility makes them do something that other people don't do. Go, you are all pardoned. Anyway, Muslims were happy, obviously. They went to Mecca, and now they can do their pilgrimage, they have their religious freedom. But not only that, do you think the Prophet ﷺ told them, you are pardoned only if you become Muslims? No condition. You are pardoned if you return what you stole to us? No. You are pardoned if you uh, apologize? No. Nobility, go your pardon. Not only that, they were scared that because they stole and they've done things that people will take their things back from them and that they would not be safe, that people will even, pub, the public will just gather among, on them. He tells them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ دَخَلَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامِ فَهُوَ آمِنْ Whoever enters Al-Masjid Al-Haram is safe. Whoever enters his own home, مَنْ دَخَلَ بَيْتَهُ فَهُوَ آمِنْ He's safe. Everyone is safe. Don't worry. You're safe. Now they move to, they move to Hunayn. They figured we are, you know, so many. And we were just, like we liberated Mecca. And now, what happened in Hunayn, obviously, as you know, Hawazan, Ghatafan, the tribes from at Ta'if gathered so many people against the Prophet ﷺ, everyone who was held out. When Mecca was liberated by Muslims, the people in at Ta'if, because they still were held out, they viewed now, it's now or never. They need to do everything. So they got uh, tens of thousands of people to come. They rallied them from everywhere. And not only that, what they did is they brought their children and women and cattle with them. And they put them all in the battle, telling their fighters what? This is it. You either kill the Muslims or there will be nothing left for you. Your women, your children are right here in the battle. Anyway, at the beginning, طبعاً, it seemed like the Muslims were losing and people were running away from the Prophet ﷺ because these people were really fierce. And uh, it was mayhem at the beginning. So much that Sayyidina al-Abbas yani, and Nabi ﷺ remained in the middle of the battle almost alone. Well, Abbas, radiallahu anhu, who, and Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, had a very loud voice. He is among those who have nice, uh, you know, nice loud voice. And he was, he was, he started calling on to the Sahaba by their names. Oh, so and so, where are you? Come back. Oh, so and so, where are you? Come back. He's calling on to them because people left the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The dust was everywhere, and the Prophet ﷺ was left alone, him and Abbas, wa Ali, wa Fadl, etc. When Nabi ﷺ on his mule saying, Ana nabiyu la kathib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am the Prophet, no lie. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. Even when he was alone. Look, at that time, what was that? Was post the liberation of Mecca. Uh, the celebration were everywhere, and people were almost. Uh, you know, so proud of their achievement. And they said, what? This uh, Hunayn is a piece of cake. No problem. Allah Ta'ala taught them a lesson. Anyway, eventually, things went the other way, and the Muslims won. The Prophet Sallallahu contrary to the habit at that time, which says you kill the fighters and you take the women as concubines and you enslave the children, he freed them all. But he kept their cattle. And the monies they left behind. They left everything behind and ran. So he took that. 
And with him was the people who were in Mecca, who held out to the last minute, and they were so what, what the ulama of hadith and sunnah call al-mu'allafa qulubuhum. Al-mu'allafa qulubuhum, those people, and when they left Mecca, when Mecca was liberated just a little bit ago, they did not really accept Islam in a sense. Or they may, some of them used to say, La ilaha illallah is no problem, but Muhammad Rasulullah is a problem. We don't have a problem believing in Allah. But as far as Muhammad and Rasulullah, there's something in the heart from that. Some of them did not say that. Some, their Islam, they were paid. At, that the Prophet Sallallahu gave them eventually the booties. He took the booties he gave them. So and so take 100 camels. So and so take 100 camels. So 100 camels is a lot of money. Now, today is a lot of money. Somebody gives you 100 camels, you're a millionaire. You don't need anything. You're done. How much is a camel, Mawlana Shaykh Ahmad? Majid Mawlana Shaykh Ahmad. Rands. Yeah. 10, 15,000 riyals in the old days. Yeah. You, you, it's a lot of money. He gave them 100, 200. To these people who were, their Islam was, mm, I mean, their Al Ansar radiallahu anhum came. Al-Ansar, I mean, they gave their homes and land and wealth. They split it with the believers. They, I mean, they opened their, they, and they swore to protect the Prophet Sallallahu and uphold. They pledged to him. They gave bay'ah to him that they would die before him. And they delivered. They delivered on their oath all the way. Some of them felt that been protecting him and gave him and opened for him and all this, all this. Now when he gets a lot of money or booties, he gives it to these people who are not even Muslims and they never fought. If any, they've been fighting us all along. We've been fighting them. So they, there was this talk. So the Prophet Sallallahu brought them. He called Sa'ad bin Ubadah. He says, what do I hear, Ya Sa'ad? He says, Ya Rasulullah, it's not us. It's the, some lay people amongst the Ansar are saying this. They are saying, they're saying, you know, we are his supporters. We are his, we are his sincere, selfless soldiers all along. We gave, we sacrificed. People of us died. You know, we, we shed our own blood. We gave our wealth. We gave our time. We gave this. And now you give to the others. There's something in our hearts, Ya Rasulullah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, He says, Say, Fala in kultum la sadaktum musuddiktum. If you say, You have said the truth, and I will confirm what you said. Weren't you alone, and we sponsored you? Weren't you. Uh, uh, seeking refuge and we granted you refuge weren't you this and we gave you this he said yes if you said this yeah you say it say it Nabi Sallallahu is telling Nasa say it say it it's okay you if you say it you've said the truth and I would tell you that you said the truth then he tells them Ya Ma'ashar al-Ansar oh people of the Ansar Weren't you dalleen? Weren't you misguided? Fahadakumullahu bi. Weren't you misguided and Allah Ta'ala guided you through me? Weren't you even needy amongst you? You are not that wealthy. Allah gave barakah in your wealth because of me and you know it. Weren't you separate and everyone is going their own ways and Allah united you because of me? Oh, Ma'ashar al-Ansar, oh, people of the Ansar, aren't you happy that I give these people whatever little things, insignificant things of the dunya that will perish, and you return to Medina with Rasulullah? They return to their homes with their cattle that I gave them, and you return to your home with Rasulullah. Aren't you, aren't you pleased with that? 
And he kept telling them these things until Al Ansar, طبعاً, the whole camp of the Ansar was buzzing with weeping and crying of the Ansar. Radina, Ya Rasulullah, Radina. Qabilna, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we, we, are, we are pleased with that. And he reminded them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I get goosebumps every time I say this. Aren't you pleased this? Aren't you? Didn't Allah give you this because of me? Didn't Allah because I gave you this? Didn't Allah give barakah on your life? Didn't Allah give barakah on your husband? Didn't Allah, all this one, two, three, where were you? That you're looking at lu'a'a min dunya he tells them. I gave them insignificant, perishable thing in the dunya. And they go home with it. They go home with their little dunya that they think they got. And you go home with Rasulullah. He's trying to open their minds. Mm. Self-recognition. He's trying to tell them that recognition is not by recognition of the dunya. Recognition of the dunya doesn't go anywhere. It stays in the dunya. But the recognition of the akhirah is the recognition that goes with you. The recognition of the akhirah is the one that matters. And therefore, a true believer is busy observing Allah's grace and showing gratitude to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather than seeking self-recognition, you'll always find these two tracks. Those who seek self-recognition and those who are busy seeking or observing, sorry, observing Allah's grace. Because Allah's grace exists already, you just need to observe it. Like the Ansar radiallahu anhum, they at that moment, they did not see it, but Allah's grace was with them, that Allah Ta'ala kept his own Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among them, and he is the reason for their guidance, and he is the reason for this. And look at that, until today, 1400 years after the fact, Whenever we mention the Ansar, we say, may Allah be well pleased with the Ansar. What, what people love them, you all love them, we all love the Ansar. We haven't even seen any of them. We've only heard of their names, but we don't know them, but we love them. Look how Allah put the love of the Ansar thousands of years after them, thousand years. People still have so much love in them, to them, towards them. So much appreciation for them. So much uh, uh, glory and awe in our hearts towards them. That's, that's no money in the world would be worth that. No money, no way can ever be, can ever measure that. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to show them that seeking self-recognition by the dunya recognition, dunya recognition doesn't, there's no point. The point is that you keep or you're busy observing Allah's grace and showing Him gratitude, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing Him gratitude, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can never please people, I always say this. I mean, the, you all know the story of Luqman allegedly, right? He's teaching his son whose pleasure you should be seeking. So he got out of the village and rode on his donkey. And this young son, the teenage son, told him, you pull the donkey and I sit on the donkey, the old man. And the young the teenage son is pulling the donkey and going from one village to another. As soon as Luqman and his son pull into the next village, People in the next village gather. They say, "Hawla wala quwwata illa billah." They say, "To look at this old man, he he has no rahma in his heart anymore. He's leaving his young son walk while he's sitting comfortably on the on the donkey. What happened to the fathers have rahma on their children? What happened the fathers sacrifice for their children? What happened to all these old values?" The sign of Qiyamah is already coming. Day of judgment is coming. That's what. And at that time, he says, okay, now we switch. So now the kid is sitting on the donkey and Luqman is pulling the donkey, the mule from the rope. And they go on. Next village, they come, they walk into the village. 
people of the village gather. Those, you know, usually the people who don't do anything in around the village. They look at the uh, there's no more akhlaq in this world. There's no more tarbiyah. Look at this fresh kid. He's sitting on the donkey and his old man is walking. There is no respect anymore. There is no, uh, all these values, all the akhlaq, all the ethics, all the morals are gone. The qiyamah is coming already. Now, he says, you know, let's both get on the donkey. Yeah. So they both get on the donkey. And they are going on the donkey, the old man and his son, until they pull to the next village. And the people gather around. They say, la, 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 la. Ya, akhi, you don't know the donkey also has a, has a ruh. This is a nafs. Yani, you cannot abuse this just because Allah created it for you and made it not speak. Doesn't mean that you can abuse it. Both of you sitting on it like this. Give it, ya akhi, a break. Haram. You don't fear Allah. You don't have any taqwa. You don't have anything. You know, no. Zulm. They both get off the donkey. He says, okay, both of us now walk next to the donkey. They both now pull the rope and they dunk. nobody's on a donkey. Soon as they pull to the next village, people gather around and they start laughing. <laughs> you people are crazy. You don't know Allah created the donkey so you can ride it, not you walk next to it. It's for riding. He created for you the mules and the donkeys so you can ride them. No, no, you can walk next to them. You people are crazy. Seeking the recognition of people is a long story. Long story. Long story. What should we do? Not care about people? No, care. Seek Allah's recognition or Observe Allah's grace and show gratitude towards Him and be kind unto people. Be kind unto people, regardless what they do. Be kind unto them. Seeking their recognition, that's what sends people into depression today. You know how much I hear, Sheikh? I can't believe she said that to me. We've been friends for 10 years. I couldn't believe I went into depression after she said that. Yeah, because you are basing all your life based on her perception of you. And people today, that's what they do. Everything is based on other. The way they dress is not because what they like. What others, pers oh, if I, look, if I buy this, oh, they're going to like it. Are you going to like it or not? I mean, what's the point? They dress for other people. They eat for other people. They live in a home that other people like. They ride a car that other people like. Everything about other people and therefore they forget themselves in the process. And they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they live for others. A true believer doesn't live for others. A true believer is busy observing Allah's grace and showing gratitude towards him. Rather than seeking self-recognition. Sometimes the best deeds you may do are those deeds who nobody knows. You and Allah only. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Oh, there's much more ikhlas in that. It's much more pure from ostentation and show up. Nobody knows. You remember the hadith? Warajulon and a man who gave in his right hand that which his left hand doesn't know. Your left hand doesn't know what your right hand gave. Huh? That's someone. Not other people don't know what he gave. His left hand doesn't know what his right hand gave. Seeking recognition of others is a long story. It doesn't mean other people are not good. No, but I try to train myself not to expect no expectation from others. And relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taban, we are human beings. We always, we get frustrated. We get sad. We have emotions. It's normal. Like in a true believer always remember, recalibrates himself or herself. To observe Allah's grace and show Allah gratitude. Thank you, Ya Allah, for everything. 
Because there's so much grace. Why are you upset about one thing? He still graced you so much. Look at them, observe them, and be thankful. Show gratitude towards him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, take a look at some people with some conditions in the world today. Whether it's wars or diseases or afflictions, or etc. You've got a lot to be thankful for. A lot to be thankful for. That's much more beneficial for you. Seeking other people's recognition is a problem because it's ego with ego, earth with earth. There's clash. See, the souls don't clash. They may go through each other, no problem, and come out. But the bodies clash because they're soil. You got iron, you got all these things in there. Allah, Allah. Number 23. If you have not witnessed him, you are drowning in witnessing the creation. If you have not yet witnessed him, that's a sign. You've been, you are drowning in witnessing the creation. Take time. Take time out. Check your salah. Your salah is a platform. Your salah is an avenue. Check your mu'amalat. What do you mean your mu'amalat? With your family, with your spouse, with your children. Observe him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing this, you're being a good father or a good mother while observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you do with your family. You're witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how you do with your work. You're witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you do in, in life. If you haven't witnessed him, you're drowning in witnessing the creation. Drowning. It's not even, it's not, it's not even giving, leave, letting you have a, a breath. It's just covering you entirely. And it's time to have these moments where you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These moments are the moments that last. These moments are the moments that stay. The moments of witnessing the creation, you're a delusion, watch witnessing delusion. You're a perishable witnessing perishables. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And you fill yourself up with all that. Seek him in everything that you do during the day. Starting from your salah, seek him in it. Starting from your Quran, he's talking to you directly in that Quran. He's telling you, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, you. Naam ya Rabb. Yes, ya Allah. Yes, your response. Drowning doesn't last. Because drowning eventually leads to death. So drowning is just the beginning. But the point is that that drowning may stay all your life and you don't want to go to losing all the time in life. Don't drown. Seek help. SOS. Seek him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get out, out of that water. Put your head up. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. In your salah, call unto him, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Ya Allah, I am seeking you. Iya can abud, wa iya can astain. Ya Allah, I am seeking you. I am worshipping you. Put that shaitan down. Put all these things, all these distractions down. Try to witness him, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Observe that he's observing you. That's what I mean by witnessing. So that the creation does not drown you. 
Wallahi, all this glitter that we have. And we're so mesmerized by. Because we're human beings, we're mesmerized by the soil and whatever the soil is, right? Mm, today I told them, I mean, the same carbon atoms <coughs> rearranged. Either you have coal or you have diamonds. Same, exactly. Same. Just rearrange them. That's it. You don't need anything else. You don't need to add anything else. They're all the same. The essence is the same. Don't be witnessing these things. Don't let them take your time. Don't let them rob your life. Don't let the creation rob you from your life. Because your life is a number of days. It's time. It's timed. Don't let it rob. Don't let the creation rob you from that life. Enjoy life. Allah gave you that life to enjoy it, to live it with love. Love Allah, love the creation. That's the message. Love God, love His creation. That's the message. Love the Creator, love His creation. That's the message. But don't lend everything and give your most precious thing time to the creation. Witnessing the creation and being in absolute heedlessness from the Creator. The creation is going to perish and it's not going to worry about what you witnessed. That perception will perish also with it. My father, rahimahullah, used to always say, Allah have mercy on all your family who passed away or still alive. He used to say, be careful, son, from those who rob people of their money. They're thieves. But bigger thieves are those who rob people of their time. Those are bigger thieves because money is replaceable. Time isn't. وَالْوَقْتُ أَثْمَنُ مَا عُنِيتَ بِحِفْظِهِ وَأَرَاهُ أَسْهَلُ مَا عَلَيْكَ يَضِيعُ Time is the most precious thing Allah gave you. And there are some people who not only just they get robbed from time, they get robbed their iman. Their iman gets robbed. So if you haven't tried to witness him, if you haven't witnessed him yet, it's a sign you're drowning in witnessing the creation. So seek help. Get out. Get out there. Put your head up and say, Ya Allah, Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'een. Ya Malik yawm al-deen. Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'een. Ya Allah, I need your help. Seek his help. He'll give you help, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll breathe, and little by little you can get out. If you have not yet witnessed him, you are drowning in witnessing the creation. Don't drown, my beloved, don't drown. His love out there will take you, regardless how long you've been drowning. There is no shortage of love out there from Allah Ta'ala. And there's no shortage of forgiveness by Allah Ta'ala. It's there. No matter what you did, no matter how long you have a sinner, how much of a sinner you have been, no matter who you are, there's always a door that's open for you. The door of Rahmah is open for you. The door of mercy, the door of forgiveness, the door of love is unconditionally open for you. Just seek it. Seek His love, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Barakallahu. But important to diagnose that. Make sure that you, where are you? Have you witnessed him yet? Sometimes, okay, sometimes you've witnessed his closeness. You've experienced that he's observing you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're in his presence. Great, build on that. Increase that. Bring more this happiness to your life. That serenity to your life. That solace to your life. Have those moments with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're talking to him. I told you, number 222, the number you dialed, 444. Four, four. Right? You've got to have that 4 o'clock, four, 4 prayers, 4 rak'ah, and 4 tears. 
He knows you. It's okay to be weak. Because Allah knows you're weak. You don't need to pretend now that you're strong. You're not strong. He knows you're not strong. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ He knows you. But be genuine with him. Try. Try. So try. Try to be better. Try to stop sinning. Genuine try. Not say, I'm going to try and you're not trying. No. You've got to bring yourself to say, genuinely, I am not going to do this. I'm going to try all I can. And if you fall again, you try genuinely again. If you haven't yet witnessed him, you're drowning in witnessing his creation. But that's also reversibly correct, meaning what? If you're drowning in witnessing the creation, you're not going to be witnessing him. The creation is all over. How can we witness him? The reverse is also correct. If you are witnessing the creation, you're not going to be witnessing him. Doesn't happen. You've got to, that's what they said, tahalli and tahalli. You've got to detach to be attached. At attached. Detachment, then attachment. Detachment, then attachment. Let's go to number 24. Number 24, the author, Allah Ta'ala, forgive him, said, Finding yourself missing him is a sure sign of ghafla. Finding yourself, if you find yourself that you miss Allah, that's a certain sign of heedlessness. Finding yourself missing Him is a sure sign of heedlessness from Him. Ghafla, for only the absentee misses. And you miss him if he's present with you. You have been distanced. That's why you miss. Therefore, finding yourself missing him is a sign that you've been distanced from him. Finding yourself missing him is a sure sign of ghafla for only the absentee misses. The one in ghafla, the heedless, misses. Find yourself in his presence. As if you are, if you're not in his presence, you're lost. You can only be found when you are with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why It's attributed, Ibn Asakim and others attribute without an authentic sign to Sayyidina Imam al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, that he's saying, that he says, Amiyat aynun lam taraka alayha qariba. An eye is blind that doesn't see you, and an ear is deaf that doesn't recognize that you see and hear everything. When were you absent to be missed? He's talking about Allah. When, uh, whenever were you absent? When were you ever absent so that you are missed? Mata ghibtya? When were you ghaib? Subhanak, you're always hadir. You're always present. Finding yourself missing him is a sure sign of ghafla. Not death spiritually, but ghafla. Because you still have what? A feeling that you're missing. If you have a feeling that...